Well, hey teachers, and welcome back. In this video, I wanna give you some help teaching your students how to build all parts of their argument from scratch for a long essay question. And then I wanna give you a tool for speeding up your grading. So last night, my seventh grade son, seeking to demonstrate that he was smarter than his dad, gave me an algebra problem from a worksheet that he had completed in class. His dad, seeking to demonstrate that he was indeed smarter than a seventh grader, said, heck yeah, give it to me. He wrote the problem down, set it in front of me, and I sat there, paralyzed. Now, to be fair, I'm not much of a math guy, but I am competitive, and to make matters worse, he gave the same problem to my wife, and she was over there scribbling away while I sat there staring into the abyss, wondering what I had made of my life. I just knew that there was a logical solution, and if I just thought about it hard enough, I could figure out the problem. As I was in the midst of the existential void, I heard the awful cry across the table, piercing the darkness, terrible as an army with banners at dawn. X equals zero. Hey, look, I... I feel like I'm pretty educated, like probably more educated than your average bear, and yet I couldn't even make a dent in the problem. So I asked, how did you do that? And that's when my 12-year-old son showed me the process step by step for how to solve a problem like this. And once I saw the steps, the next problem was easy. Now, I would wager that because we are teachers and have our degrees and we know how to make historical arguments, that supporting a thesis with evidence is second nature to us. But our students are more like me in front of that simple algebra problem. I say to them, look, make an argument and support it with evidence. Easy. And into the void they go. Like, it seems simple. If they could only think about it hard enough, the answer would appear. And yet, it never does. What they need is to see the steps laid out before them. Do this first, do that second, and then you will arrive at the answer. Now, we know that historical argumentation can be elegant and non-formulaic, but it doesn't become that without passing through the formulaic stage first. And so what I want to offer you for teaching the LEQ is a tool that lays out the steps for constructing an historical argument. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you another tool for speeding up your grading of these LEQs. So this tool is actually part of my AP World and APUSH teacher resources, which have class activities for every topic of every unit of the curriculum. If you're interested in having a look at those, then you can find the links in the description. But for now, let's just see how this tool can help your students learn the steps for building an argument and writing a good LEQ, and the link for this tool is down in the description as well. So step one is always understanding what the prompt is asking. Look, I'm just gonna be honest with you, I have never read an essay prompt from the college board that has made me think, oh, yeah, I know exactly what they're talking about. Even as a teacher, even with somebody with way more experience in history than my students, I still have to read it several times before I get a sense of what they're asking. And if that's the case with me, it is surely the case for them. So they need to do the work of understanding what is being asked of them before they even get into writing. Step two is to brainstorm evidence and then create topic sentences for their body paragraphs. Now, I used to tell my students to create the thesis first, but this is the way I do it now for two reasons. Number one, by creating topic sentences first, they are more than halfway towards writing a thesis since they can just steal from from these topic sentences to write their thesis. And number two, if a student is going to leave anything out of their essay, it's probably going to be the topic sentences of their body paragraphs. And I don't blame them. Look, I mean, it's not on the rubric. Why would they do it? But topic sentences for their body paragraphs are so important for organizing their argument that I require it. It's what binds all the evidence together in a coherent argument. So here I have them write the topic sentences. And I've got two boxes here because really they only need two body paragraphs. Like if they want three, that's fine, but there isn't enough time for any more than that. Step three is to write the thesis. For this, as I said, they can steal information from their topic sentences, and if they've done a good job there, then the thesis, you know, almost writes itself. Step four is to compose the contextualization paragraph. The rule of thumb here is about two to three content-rich sentences that mention by name specific evidence related to the argument that the student is making. And I cannot emphasize that word relevant enough. So many students miss this point because they write a couple of sentences that includes evidence from a time before the prompt, and then they tend to think that as long as I write about stuff that happened before, then I'm good. No, you're not. It has to relate to your argument. And then step five is to create the structure of your argument with evidence. And as you know, the main differentiator between students who earn one point or two points in the evidence section is whether they merely describe the evidence or use it to support their argument. And this little formula is going to help them support their argument with evidence. They've already composed their argument in the thesis, and now they just need to brainstorm actual vocabulary words that are going to help them support that argument. But in order to support it, they need to define the term, and then they need to start the next phrase or sentence with, which shows, or this shows, or whatever. That phrase is going to force them to demonstrate how this evidence supports their argument, and then they'll be on their way to earning full points. So obviously, this is not the only way to teach students how to compose an argument, but if you don't already have a method that works, then I hope this one helps. Now, one more thing. After the students write their fabulous LEQs, that means you're going to have to grade them. A few weeks ago, I released my DBQ rubric, which includes stock commentary and has links to videos that are gonna help them where they need it. And then a lot of you asked if I had one for the LEQ, and the answer was eh, no, but you know I love you. So I went ahead and created one, and you can find the links for both in the description below. I hope it helps you speed things up. So the point is this. If the students have a formula to follow, 
follow, it may save them from sinking into the existential void as I did before my son's algebra problem. If they just know the steps, they are much more likely to succeed. Okay, thanks for watching. You can check the description for all the links that I mentioned in this video, and if this helped you and you want me to keep making them, then by all means, subscribe, and I shall oblige. I'm Lerout.